Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Very excited to have Britt on the channel. Today, she's gonna to give us a tour of her 1989 Sportsmobile Pop Top Classic Camper Van. So join us. Hi, I'm Britt, and I have been a digital nomad for the better part of the last 10 years. I've lived in schoolies, I've lived in RVs, and currently I have an 89 Ford Sportsmobile. I love how when her Pop Top is down, cause she has a Pop Top, it's a little bit more stealthy. I have tinted windows and all of these back windows on both sides, including the back. So it gives me a little bit more privacy. And we also, if you check it out, we have these curtains throughout. Not only are they th that thick material, so it's gonna give you a little bit of insulation, but you can't see any light coming out of it, which is really good when you don't wanna get that knock. If you look over here, we have the Van Dog Cedar because what's van life without a van dog, right? Uh, we have some wooden pieces right here. Help me level out. Also sometimes get out of a sticky situation or two. And why don't we jump on in? Cedar, why don't you get on the camera? Okay, get out, go, 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 go. Good boy. So this is the baby. Her name is Thelma. Right here we have a, couch that is going to fold down into ooh, a bed. She's a little bit bigger than a twin, but she is pretty short. One person can sleep in here. If you're real good friends, you could squeeze two in. You got a little bit of storage. I keep some bedding down here. This is a two person sleeping bag. It's usually me and my partner and two dogs when we're staying stealthy and we're not on the top. So it gets a little bit squished but we make it work. Anything to stay stealth. If we come up over here, we have that two burner stove. Makes it nice, cook breakfast, eat lunch, do everything a normal stove can do. We have all of the utensils, anything you'd need to cook, some toothbrushes, floss, all the fun stuff. Come in here, this is our pantry, cooking. A lot of times there's lots of food in here. Uh, I have cast iron, coffee, everyone needs the coffee. We have our sink over here. Right now she is winterized, but in the next few weeks she will not be anymore, so we have hot and cold water. It's turned on with the little on and off switch over here um, that runs off the battery in the front for the house battery. We'll get there later. Um, normal water. If we move underneath the sink, everything that someone keeps underneath the sink in their house. You know, we got some soap, some cleaning supplies. Usually when we are living in this and we're on a trip, this thing is full of all of those kinds of fun things. A uh, little towel rack for when you're doing dishes. And then we move down here. When the pop top is open, you can actually stand and this is a full workspace, which out of all the vehicles I've lived in, this is the smallest, but it is some of the most counter space I've had while living in a vehicle. So I like love this area when I'm cooking and folding laundry and like just doing whatever normal things you do in a day work. I also sometimes sit here and put my laptop here and I'll work. I sometimes film things here. So all the normal things. Um, we have two outlets out here. These, now these guys only work when I am plugged into shore power. All right, I got a fun little piece right here. It's like a cigarette lighter that you have in your car. And I have this little inverter. It's perfect because when I'm not in shore power, I just plug her in and she turns right on. You can hear her, well I can, I don't know if you guys can. Um, she's got two USBs and two plugs. I can charge laptops, cameras, phones, Anything I need to get work done and be a digital nomad on the road, I can plug into here and I run for hours. It's amazing, I love it. So we'll put that away. Now these two cabinets, I have one. My partner has one. We each have a drawer. His is empty right now. But I have, you know, those classic van life things. Tons of baby wipes because van life. <laughs> Uh, hairbrush, all the fun things that you have. And then this is just all of my clothes. Um, right now it's empty because we're in a house, so I've been doing laundry and doing all that stuff, but that's where they go. His is exactly the same. All right, I think we should pop her up. 
So I got two latches up here. They're really easy to undo. Now I have a third one in the back that's right in the middle, so let me grab that. Use a little bit of my head and pop her up. How cool, right? Come on, Cedar, get in the van. Sit down. Good boy, you wanna sit? Lay down. Good job, van dogs. All right, so now that we got the top popped, there are a ton of windows. And now we also have those same thermal curtains from this window and the front and the ones I showed you before. So you can, short people, um, roll them down. Now this gets really dark because they block out the sun. Also, it gives you a little bit of privacy because people love to look in the van, which is awesome. I love to share it. But when I'm sleeping in the morning before there's coffee, maybe just wait till after I have coffee. So we just put those up. It's super easy, takes just a couple seconds. And now, because I like to go hot places, these all zipper down and they have these bug nets. So I don't have to worry about the creepy crawlies coming in too, too much because in van life, you get the creepy crawlies coming in. <laughs> so we can keep the mosquitoes out and some of those other ones that aren't so pleasant. I really like that. So these all come down and it, when it's hot, now there's no AC in here. So when it's really hot and you have them all down and you're up here, you get that breeze coming through and it's like a natural AC and it's a game changer for everything. Now we have lights throughout. They run off the house battery, which is really nice. Now this is another bed. One or two people can sleep up here very comfortably. So if you have friends or something that decide they want to come with me on a trip or a weekend in the woods, I can comfortably sleep three friends, four really good friends <laughs> in the van, which is a nice option to have. Now these I also love because they are in three pieces. So when I am not stealthing out on some public land or in a campground or in an RV park, and we're gonna stay there for a while. We take these and they can stack right on top of each other. And I just kind of push them all the way into the back. And now I have access to this counter space I was bragging about before. And all of this is open. And realistically, once this is set up like this, it's about the same as having a high top van. All right, we got some more lights over here that also run on the house battery. I have the furnace. So when I do go into some cold climates, I have a heater, which is underneath. Now that heater runs off the propane tank that is mounted underneath the van. We have this little storage, which used to hold like a bunch of like fun things, but because of the times and the fun things, we have all the COVID supplies. So there's usually masks and hand sanitizer and rubbing alcohol and little ones. And then it's just an alarm clock because you gotta wake up in the morning. <laughs> now, if you go underneath this uh, futon bed that I showed you, you can open up this panel. And we have this wooden stick here, which I believe was for this table right here, which we unfortunately don't have the tabletop, but I think that's was what that stick was for. We have a power converter in here and all of the fuses are inside here as well. So there is an electrical panel in there. I also have a 22 gallon water tank that is gonna supply fresh water for the sink, the shower in the back. If you move down a little bit more, we have another cabinet. This cabinet is right inside of where our shore power hooks in. There's a little bit of storage and, an, and a power strip. Nothing too fun in there. All right, this is the closet. If you open her up, we got a mirror, room for hanging. There's also some bedding, pillows, and some fun stuff in there. It's a big space. It holds a lot of good stuff. Down here is more space. We have so much storage in this van. 
This is just a little box. A lot of times we keep shoes, we keep uh, winter jackets, some fun stuff under there to go on some adventures or do some outdoor stuff, but stuff we don't need quite as much. On the other side, smoke alarm, carbon monoxide because safety, paper towels, and a refrigerator. So I lived in a schoolie and in the schoolie, I did not have a fridge. I went with a cooler and the fridge is so amazing. <laughs> so you open her up, there's nothing really in here. She is a old Dometic fridge, but she works just fine. She is a three-way fridge. She is the RV fridge that, you know, the majority of RVs have. So you can run her on propane, electric, um, or, sh or the shore, like the batteries or straight plugged in. Um, there's a very, very small freezer that just has one little metal ice cube tray in it, <laughs> but she's working and she's perfect for only two people. Underneath here, I call this my bar because bottles of wine fit standing up. So <laughs> most of the time when I am going for a trip or I am living out of her, she fits, fun fact, 12 bottles of wine under here. I'm just saying. It's also the panel that you can get to all of the electrical for the fridge. So if something needs to be fixed on her, you can get to the inside of it from the inside of the van. So I do have a water heater, which is amazing. You flip this switch and she ignites. You keep moving back. This is what we call very lovingly the garage. This is 100% my partner's area. We do have a mirror in here. We have some camping chairs, a bunch of the paperwork for the van, like all the original owner's manual. manual. And now we're only the third owners of this van. So the original owner kept amazing, amazing records. And we have every update he did in the van, every oil change he did in the van. We have it all. Then it's tools and <laughs> wires and all of my partners, like fun things to be able to fix everything. This is his area. <laughs> and if you're wondering what I'm sitting on, this is coming live from the commode. I am on the toilet. <laughs> so underneath this little cover, we have an RV toilet. She flushes, she has a black water tank underneath the van. She is an old toilet. She has a flush over there. When I first got the van, I actually thought about taking the toilet out because I had a toilet in the RV and I honestly didn't really use it, but I had an 89 Mini Winnie, so she was big. And most of the time I was honestly taking her into RV parks where most of the time they had those amenities there. So I never really used her because it was kind of more work than what it was worth. But I have to say, having it in here, I am so glad I didn't take it out because in those moments where it is an emergency or maybe you take her into the city, which because she's a little bit more stealthy, we tend to do, it's really nice to not have to go find a fast food restaurant or like somewhere where we can use the bathroom. Now back here, we are also going to have our fan. So you pull this and she goes on. We gotta change the fuse on her. But it's an old van. There's always something that needs to be fixed and updated, but it's part of the journey. It's part of the fun. We also have the shower. Now over here, we have our hot water and our cold water. So that hot water heater you saw turn me on before, we are ready to take some wonderful showers. Now you can shower in here. This moves. So I can stand right up and we have the shower hose. I can shower. There is a hook over here. There is a hook over here. And down here I have the piece and she will attach all up here in a little circle so you can have privacy. A shower curtain goes all around and you just stand up and you can take your shower. I have never done that. I don't know if I will ever do that because Again, I like to go to hot places. So, and the top has to be popped. There's not really anywhere to stand in here. It's kind of claustrophobic. So, so I wanna show you how we shower outside or how I shower outside. But there's still more storage in this girl. So you can open her up here. We have stuff to keep the toilet running good. We got poopy bags for the dog. We have some rubber gloves because this does go into a black water tank and you do have to deal with it when you live in a van. And we also have more storage behind 
that shower head. So in here, there's not that much right now, but usually I have towels, towels, and all the toiletries that anyone would have in their bathroom. And let's go outside. <laughs> all right, let's go all the way around back because this is how I like to shower. So I open up these doors. In here, there's a little latch. And now she is open. So my ideal way to take a shower in the van is to come outside and get this hook. And I just put on the hot water, get the hair wet, soap it up, get all sudsy, rinse it off. Definitely water effective because I only got 22 gallons under there. So I need to make that last. Usually takes me about two gallons of water to take a shower. Now here, we have a hose. This is actually for drinking, so this will hook up to the outside of the van, so I will show you that. Um, if we hook into like a shore water line. Um, these are some chemicals and fun things. This is some gasoline, because not that long ago we were driving through nowhere Georgia and we really wanted to make sure we didn't run into an issue where we didn't have gas. Because if you've ever driven through Georgia, you may know that sometimes there is long stretches with no gasoline. <laughs> so we just wanted to make sure. Now this, like I showed you before, more curtains. We have the privacy, keeps the light out in the morning, keeps that dreaded knock away, and now we also have the tinted windows, which helps with that as well. This is a little grill. If you look at the doors, sneaky storage in her. They're hollow, right? So a lot of times we use it for a little bit of storage. Now back here, we also have the hitch. Um, we have used this before. We actually like to travel with a little motorcycle, which allows when you know, you're with a partner and you're in the van for so long, sometimes you just need to go out and have your own space and do your own thing. It's a relationship saver. So we travel with a road bike slash trail bike that it's a little Honda. She'll attach back here and then we got toys. Now I also wanna show you some of the fun things over here. This is that hot water heater. It gives you access to her. This is the vent for the refrigerator. Keep the food cold. This is the hose. Remember I said we have a water drinking hose over there. This is where that plugs in. Gives us water right into the sink. This is that fan that I showed you that's right by the, uh, the shower slash toilet. Some may refer to it as a fart fan. Might have done that myself. But a really fun little fact that I think is funny is back then they had the regular, you know, 250 Econo line and the extended cap. You can see where they just placed this on there. You can even see where the reflector was. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. Gas, you know. This is where we plug into that shore power. I have an extension cable in there, so I don't worry too much about that. And I almost forgot, this is the waste dump, and under there we got the black water tank. So that's everything for our toilet. That's why we have the gloves in there. That's something that you have to deal with. <laughs> in the back, I also got this ladder installed. So this was custom. Um, when I got her, she did not have this. I worked with some people over in Red Bank, New Jersey, and they found me this ladder to match her whole aesthetic and the time period and put her in custom for me. Now, if we keep moving down, this is where my propane is. She's underneath and we can fill her up. Now, in the winter when we were going through Georgia, it did get pretty cold at night, even being that far south. We ran the heater all night, every night lasted us two weeks. We had the fridge running, we had hot water running, we had heat nonstop. We, we were surprised on how long that propane last us. And this is right here, the exhaust for the heater. And let's check out the cap. Cedar, you getting in? Cedar, get in the van. There we go. Okay. So we climb in, uh, I have the height of the van because I can't be trusted to remember that all of the time. So now I can't forget, just in case, we have the temperature gauge because now 
we do have it on the dash. But about a year ago, her engine died. And when she got a new engine, we put this in because I wanted to make sure that we were not going to have that problem again. She was gonna get one new engine and then she was gonna live forever because that's, her name is Thelma and that's what she's gonna do. Now, we also have, excuse my coffee, we have a tape cassette player. And if you think I have tapes, you know I do. This is number one that plays, Lionel Richie, all the time. <laughs> And we put her in, she sounds great. We have AC and heat. You know, she is old, so we have an old school cigarette lighter here. We have a level and a compass. Now the level's important because when you're in an RV and you have the gas going and you have everything else going, you wanna make sure that you're level. So when we're not, those wooden planks that I showed you before in the beginning when we were coming in, those help us to stay level so that we can make sure everything runs and everything runs safely. Now here in the dash, it's just a bunch of storage, which is fantastic. Now I also use a lot of solar stuff. So here is a solar speaker. I put that up there all the time. In here we got a solar phone charger. I put that in the dash all the time. Stay charged up. One of the things that we kind of came into a little hack about is sometimes when you're in the van and you have everything going and these old vans have the carpet up here, it can make this front get so much condensation. You know those little silica packets? We'll throw them up here because they absorb the moisture and they keep our windshield from getting condensation-y. Now, as we move in, these chairs swivel around. So right here, you can hang out, Cedar's here. Like I said before, sometimes we like to have friends come and join us for a weekend camping trip because we can sleep three to four people. And now we can all hang out, everyone can be a part of it, and we're still sitting inside. Now, coming back through, I wanna show off my windows. We have crank windows. I love it. I feel like I'm in like a Goodfellas movie when I like crank it down and he's like, if the girl doesn't lean over and open the car for you, then she's not a keeper. Like, that's how I feel. <laughs> but my favorite thing, butterfly windows. You open them up and we do have the AC. The AC works. But when you're like driving on those long roads out in the country in the middle of nowhere, there's something about rolling down all the windows, having the butterfly windows open and like the the breeze going through your hair. I feel like, like that's the pinnacle where life's a movie. And then we can pop the hood. All right, let's see what's underneath. Ugh, these old vans are heavy. <laughs> All righty. So like I said, she got a new engine. She is a 5.0 V8, like a Mustang. I have two batteries under the hood. This is the house battery with the isolator. So when we're camping and we're parked somewhere, this battery doesn't start draining this battery, which is the car battery. The fun little fact that I like about this is if this battery is, does lose power, drained, died, we can give ourselves a jump from the house battery to the car battery and get her started. So anyone that doesn't own one of these vans, or they do, these doors barely even open, and I didn't know this for the longest time, but there's something pretty cool. These little pins, they come out, and you have full range, they're completely open, and you're really ready to go. I was in college, um, about to graduate with a few different degrees, but history, poli-sci, and I had done some teaching hours, and like I was like, I don't wanna be a teacher, I am so thankful for teachers, they are wonderful, but it kind of scared me as a kid in my early 20s being like, I'm going to do the same thing for the next, you know, 40, 50 years if I was lucky. And I was honestly going through Pinterest and I was like, wow, there is like, there's one bus that I saw and it was like mint green and it was going all around Pinterest in like 2013. And I was like, that, I think that's it. I think that's what I wanna do. My mother was like, mm, no. Uh, my father was like, well, if you wanna do it, you better do it now. 
So I finished my degree and I also ended up like speeding through a minor in digital communication. And I had this thought that I think I can work online. I think that I can buy a school bus and turn it into a home and live in it. And that's exactly what I did. In 2014, I graduated, I saved up all my money. I had a, just a little bit of debt, paid everything off that I could, worked like 16 hour days for months, saved everything I had, and I found a bus on Craigslist. I ended up, a short bus, might I add, an Alice, a 2000 international school bus with an Allison transmission. She had 30,000 miles on her, and I'm like, she is going to be mine. I drove down to Ocean County, New Jersey, picked her up, and started the transformation. Lived in it for a little while, but it was a lot for me by myself with two dogs at the time to take care of and drive around and park and fix. I just did not have the skill set to really take that on by myself, so I sold her. And I bought an 89 Mini Winnie and did the same thing in her for about two years before backpacking around Southeast Asia and essentially living in Bali for almost two years. And then it was COVID time and I came back here and we got her. <laughs> right now, we're not in it full time, but the plan is to be in her full time. So we do have a date, but it's still a secret. So it's only us that know, so shh. Um, but we're gonna be taking off in her full time this winter and um, heading west and we're really excited about it. And you can follow me on Via Brit, so that's V-I-A-B-R-I-T-T, -T, on Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, Patreon, all of it, I'm there. <laughs> well, thank you very much for giving us a tour today. This is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, and subscribe. I'd love it, and we'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>